till midday. This is the morning program with Liam Bartlett. 29 minutes to 11 on this Friday morning. I wanted to go back to talking about uh, some of the fears that have been making headlines this morning over the the impact and the potential of escalating civil war in the Middle East. The Israel Defense Force says that air and ground troops are currently attacking in the Gaza Strip in an escalation of the conflict. Now, since uh, Monday, in a few short days, at least 103 people have been killed in Gaza, including about 27 children, according to Palestinian medical officials. Some seven people have been killed so far in Israel in some of the return rocket fire by Hamas, uh, the terrorist organisation there. A soldier patrolling the Gaza border was included in the deaths, five Israeli civilians, including two children uh, and an Indian worker, according to Israeli authorities. But it is certainly cranking up, and uh, there are people spending literally every night in bomb shelters. One of those is Arsen Ostrovsky. Arsen is an Australian uh, originally from Sydney who has lived in Tel Aviv in Israel for the last eight years. He's a lawyer and, in fact, spent some time previously in Perth. He's got a newborn baby and a small child, and the last three days he's seen a lot of bomb shelters. He joins us now from Tel Aviv, where it's about 5.30 in the morning, I think, Arsen. Good morning to you. Good morning indeed, mate. Yes, it is 5.30. It's, uh, it's an early one here. Well, I really appreciate you, you taking our call. I, I can't imagine you've got or been getting that much sleep, though, in the past few nights. No, definitely not a lot of sleep. Uh, thankfully, uh, tonight's been a little bit calmer here uh, the last few nights. There's been a, there's been a number of dashes uh, to the shelter in the middle of the night, including yesterday at 3, 3.30, I think, and then 4 o'clock again. Um, so it's it's not a pleasant feeling. The situation is, is very tense. The bombardment has been relentless. Um, we've had something like, I think, 2,000 rockets now fired by Hamas and Gaza in the past three days. On average, that's probably about a rocket every two minutes. Um, to put this in context, about two-thirds of the country here, about six million people, mate, are in rocket range. Perth, if I'm not mistaken, has a population of two million. So this is three times three times the population of Perth that's currently under under rocket fire. Um, so it's, you know, it's a harrowing experience. I have two small children, an infant, you know, having to pick up your kids at 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, your family run to shelter. We have we have a shelter, a bomb shelter at the bottom of our building, but you, you don't always have enough time to get there. Yes. And the times that we've had to, you know, uh, basically take cover in the stairwell, and um, hope for the best. Uh, mm. Look at the end of the day, you know, we we just want calm, we want peace. Mm. Oh, I'm not. With that. I'm not surprised. Uh, Arsen, where, where are they firing the yeah. rockets from? Are they all coming from within Gaza, from within the Strip? Yeah, look, uh, all the rockets are coming from within Gaza, and uh, what we've seen here is, you know, they and this is sort of the the insanity of it all. They are firing rockets from, you know civilian areas from homes and schools and hospitals while firing at civilians here in Israel and hitting our hospitals and schools and, and homes. So it's, um, you know, it's just an insane situation you know, that we're dealing with here. Uh, we have this Iron Dome, which is amazing defense mechanism that um, that is able to uh, essentially thwart some of these rockets out in the sky, but it's not foolproof. Um, and the bombardment is just so relentless. There are times when, you know, 200 rockets in one time are being fired at Tel Aviv or in the south, um, and it doesn't catch every single rocket, and they hit, and they cause damage, and they kill. There's been at least seven people that have, that have died already, including a number of children. Um, hundreds are injured, thousands are spending the night in shelter because it's so dangerous that they've been um, instructed to remain in shelter until they get the all clear um, and this is entire you know, entire families communities it's uh, mm. it's not a pleasant feeling at all mate no i can appreciate that and, and look it appears like this latest round of fighting has been uh, well at least kicked off around about the end of ramadan but but do you know what sparked it was there a particular incident oh look there's 
whole whole number of reasons that sort of came to the boil. Um, but you know, from my perspective, I think um, it's got more had more to do with the uh, inter-Palestinian um, um, politics. You had a situation of uh, a couple of weeks ago when the Palestinian president Mahmoud Abbas decided to cancel elections, and you know, this is a guy who's been president, you know. 17 years uh, going into his four-year term um, and he called off elections uh, which were meant to be held with the Hamas and this is a part of their broader campaign to exert uh, to exert dominance um, and they're using a whole bunch of excuses of what's happening around as, as pretext uh, but I think ultimately that's, that was the primary cause um, and uh, and they're using everything else essentially as an excuse to launch this, this campaign of, of terror. Yes, and, and then in the meantime, the rest of the world sort of holds their breath and thinks, well, is this is this the start of the third intifada? I mean, do we kick off, you know, with another round of, of just tit for tat for the next uh, year or two and, and see dozens of more people killed? I mean, how do you see it playing out? How do we stop it from here? Um, look, it's, uh, you know, put yourself in, uh, in the shoes here. You know, the, we've had 2,000 rockets fired in a in three days. Imagine if even one rocket was fired, heaven forbid, on Australia or anywhere else in, in America, in Europe. Uh, no one should tolerate this. Now, we want peace. Our, we want peace with the people of Gaza. They deserve peace. But ultimately, it's the Hamas that are holding both of us, people in Gaza and Israel, hostage. Um, we're fighting Hamas. Hamas is a terrorist group, but literally, literally, its mission is Israel's destruction. Mm. And they are prepared to fire rockets from behind schools and hospitals and people's homes indiscriminately at us. They don't care who they hit. They just want to kill as many people here as possible. And we, like any other country, like Australia would, like any country in the world, first duty is to defend our citizens. And that's that's what the that's what they're doing here. That's what Israel's doing. That's what Australia would do. That's what any country in the world would do in these circumstances. Mm. Well, we're, we'll be watching with uh, you know with more than a bit of interest, Arsene, and, and uh, you know, I, I I feel for you and your family and uh, thousands of other families, and also those people in in Gaza. I mean, the the bombardments that uh, Israel has launched back in retaliation, uh, oh, they're pretty they're pretty amazing too, aren't they? In a destructive sense, I mean that some of those. Those uh, targeted uh, bombs uh, create an enormous amount of damage and, and, and loss of life because the, the population is, is, so, uh, is so big there in a small area. Well, I mean, uh, there's, look, the, you know, the, the, the difference is the, the Hamas is trying to intentionally kill as many people as possible, uh, whereas the IDF is taking pinpointed action against Hamas military targets. They are warning them in advance. They are sending them leaflets. They are telling them to vacate the premises and do everything possible in order to minimize civilian casualties. But at the end of the day, it's the Hamas that are using the people of Gaza themselves as hostage, as human shields, hiding behind them, putting their weapons in there, uh, firing from civilian areas. So mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it's the Hamas that's responsible, not just for the deaths here in Israel, but ultimately for what's happening in Gaza as well. It's a terrible situation, but look, thanks for spending some time with us today, and uh, and stay safe, won't you? Cheers, mate. I appreciate that. Arsene Ostrovsky is an Australian uh, originally from Sydney and uh, living in Tel Aviv in Israel with his family. And on average, a rocket coming in every two minutes at the moment in Tel Aviv. So they're forced to uh, run for cover and have about 15 seconds to get to safety to the bomb shelter at the bottom of the building uh, from when the early warning signals, early warning sirens are, are set. A uh, terrible situation over there, and uh, you can imagine what it would be like. We did try to make contact uh, with a couple of a couple of different uh, sources that we have in Gaza at the moment, but the communication lines, I think, uh, are either uh, have either been blocked or are down generally from all the destruction. So unfortunately, we, we couldn't uh, get to speak to anybody in Gaza, but that would be uh, uh, that would be a terrible. A terrible place to be at the moment. 19 minutes to 11. Here on the morning program. Come back in a sec.